You're watching SEC Saturday on Mix 104.1 and MixTV.TV, presented by CHI Memorial. Well, a very pleasant and good morning to all of you on uh, this Saturday, and it is a new day dawning on Mix 104.1, MixTV.TV, and Talk 101.3 The Buzz. After eight years of bringing you Rocky Top Review, we are expanding our coverage from Knoxville to across the Southeastern Conference. So let me be the first to welcome you to a brand new program, SEC Saturday. Shelton, Rocky Top Review is dead. It has been. For a, for a while. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's exciting, you know, to, to be able to expand the coverage, to talk about uh, teams outside of – I wish we'd have done this years ago when Tennessee yeah. was terrible, yeah. uh, but we've waited till they're a little bit better. And yeah. uh, But, but it, again, it, this is going to be exciting to be able to go across the SEC, especially going into next season with – you know, Oklahoma and Texas coming into the mix and, and maybe others, who knows, uh, m- moving forward. But this is going to be fun. It really is. Stephen Shelton, who marks his uh, 20th year at uh, Mix 1041. And uh, we now welcome in the Georgia Bulldog himself, back-to-back champion, Yep, Josh Rogers. Oh, snap! Got to bring him out for SEC oh. uh, Saturdays. Got oh. my uh, SEC championship ring from last year, my back-to-back national championship ring and last year's <laughs> championship ring as well as well as my peach bowl ring and oh. bling is looking good in georgia oh. and uh we'll see if tennessee can get any bling this year as well so oh my gosh well josh uh, welcome into a brand new season thanks brother i'm happy to be here i think this is third fourth year now and really excited to uh, uh to kick off this new kind of campaign with sec saturday and be able to talk about um, schools from all around the Southeastern Conference. It's uh, it, There's so much going on with all the realignment. There's so much going on with all these different schools. So to be able to highlight everybody, it's uh, which we kind of did that last year. Uh, we're excited to be able to do that on an expanded level this year. All right, we're going to take our uh, first break. It's actually uh, SEC Saturday. Our new show, a new show name, is uh, presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, hello, human kindness. When we come back, we're going to look across the SEC, and we'll do that in just a moment. You're watching SEC Saturday on Mix 104.1 and MixTV.TV, presented by CHI Memorial. Welcome back, everyone, to the all-new SEC Saturday on Mix 104.1, presented by CHI Memorial. We're also on Talk 101.3 The Buzz and MixTV.TV. We're getting ready uh, for the noon kickoff in Nashville, Tennessee, and Virginia at Nissan Stadium. Well, I'll tell you what, Shelton, let's begin with a season preview and outlook. And uh, let's, I'll tell you what, let's begin with the SEC Eastern Division. I mean, sure, it's Georgia's to lose. They have the worst schedule in, the, in college football, uh, bar none. Really, the only competition they're going to have all season, and many be competitions, is Tennessee coming to Knoxville. Uh, I think that's, the, that's their only game to, to lose, uh, possibly. Uh, other than that, Georgia looks uh, primed and ready for a, a run at a uh, third consecutive national championship. They got a few pieces to to figure out, but other than that, uh, I think they're 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 well on their way to uh, to winning the East again. I think Tennessee will will be there uh, in the top three, along with I really think Kentucky possibly could be in that top three, and, and a bubble team there could be South Carolina. Everyone outside of that. Uh, are in shambles, more shambles than than Vanderbilt's football stadium at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, now, Josh, your reaction to your colleague here, Shelton, saying what he did about your team, and nice job on the rings there if you're watching on television. Thank you, yeah. So, um, no, I agree. I mean, Georgia does have an easy football schedule, but when the entire SEC East sucks and is not good, what what do you do? I mean, you play, you have to play Missouri. You have to play Vandy. You have to play, you know, like he said, South Carolina. Uh, and even Florida has not been good. Um, yeah, we've got a handful of cupcake games this year, just like everyone else does. Um, but, you know, when that's the schedule that you're given, you know, and you choose to play, what, what else can you do? Um, I agree with Shelton. I think it's Georgia's to lose again this year. I think um, Tennessee has a very good chance last year. You know, they were 10-2 and two on the year. Um, where it was able to be – or sorry, 11-2 and two on the year, 6-2 and two in the SEC uh, with losses to Georgia and to South Carolina. Um, I think that, 
my rankings for this year, um, my prediction, Georgia 1, South Carolina 2, Tennessee 3, Florida 4, Kentucky 5, then Mizzou and Vandy to round it out. I think South Carolina has a chance to be a really good team this year. Spencer Rattler coming back uh, again for what, what seems like his kind of fifth or sixth season. He's on the Stetson Bennett train right now to, to be here for forever. But South Carolina has a has a pretty easy schedule as well and the ability to be able to kind of play some good games. You saw that against Tennessee last year, uh, what they can do when they play really well. Big question is going to be kind of what that South Carolina defense does this year. Um, but again, I, you know, in the SEC East, I think it's Georgia's to lose. And, and then I think it comes down to South Carolina or, or Tennessee. To his point, yeah, George, he can say the East is terrible all he wants. But at the end of the day, they, they don't control who they play in the East, but they do control who they play out of conference. <clears throat> Excuse me. UT Martin, Ball State, UAB, and Georgia Tech. They really went out there and kind of went out there and tried to get the top tier competition to get well, them stuck. You, in that you can't really, so, you can't I mean, really count Georgia are. Tech. That's an in state rivalry. It's okay, well, let me mark year. Georgia Tech out. UAB, yeah. Ball State, UT Martin. Yeah, you guys absolutely. really went out there and pushed the envelope on that, those games. Yeah. Well, next year, that's going to be changing in the SEC, and that's one thing next that we're year. excited about. Um, but look, it, it, Georgia is the king of college football, and they have been for the past two years. And it's their it's their opportunity to win the East, win the SEC championship, and continue on the way to the national championship. Um, something that Tennessee doesn't know what feels like uh, has felt like in many many years. Um, but Shelton, if you Shelton, if you would like to, I've got a ring here, and you can feel what it feels like to be a national champion. If if you'd like to oh. back to back to back national champion, oh, if yeah. you'd like, I can give it to you to wear if you want. Oh. You're giving it to him? If he wants to wear it for just, the show. Oh, just wear it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can tell you all the things that will happen before that happens, I guarantee you. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're here on, if you're listening on the radio, we're on SEC Saturday as uh, we have rebranded this year. It's all presented by CHI Memorial. All right, let's talk about the Western Division. Josh, uh, we're going to begin with you. The SEC West. You know, for forever, it's it's been Alabama's to lose. And, and Alabama has always been one of those perennial teams for the past 10 or 15 years really since Saban has been there to to you know at, that has been at the top of every everyone's thing last year there was somebody here who famously said that Texas A&M was going to win it all and they were going to be great and we ended up seeing how that happened and that was that was me so I was oh. wrong about Texas A&M last year but this year in his second season with the last season victories of 10 and 4 and 6 and 2 I think that LSU wins the SEC West this year. Oh. I think that LSU has uh, some issues there at quarterback between Jaden Daniels and, and whether they're, they're going to kind of go Jaden Daniels or they go Nussmeyer. Um, but I think LSU has the easiest path to get there. I think that Alabama uh, is not in the top two this year. I think they are third behind Texas A&M. I think it's a make-or-break year at Texas A&M for, for Jimbo. Um, but for me, I've got LSU, A&M, Bama, Ole Miss, Auburn, and then State and Arkansas rounding out the, the end of the, end of the uh, West rankings. What about Shelton? Well, I mean, I do. I, I think LSU wins the West. I really do. I think that they really come on strong at the end of the year. You know, we went down and watched Tennessee just dismantle Entire, the entire Bayou Nation. Uh, but after that game, really, they turned it around uh, and played and really played some really good football. Yeah. Uh, I think Brian Kelly, you know, Brian Kelly's never going to win a championship. He's going to be a good regular season coach. Uh, but, but I think they can win. You look at Alabama's schedule this year, and I think it's very interesting when you see they have Texas at home, out of conference game, but mm -hmm. still Texas at home. Mm -hmm. they, they have to go to Texas, uh, Texas A&M. Uh, they play Tennessee at home, LSU at home. So if you are looking for Alabama's glimmer of hope, if, they, if that's a such thing down there, it, it, it is the fact that they do play almost all their top-tier competition in rankings thus far at home except for A&M. So, so that is one thing of getting to play at home, and, and that's a big deal in college football. So if there is that part, it's, it's LSU, Alabama at home, you know, November 4th, uh, right now, Alabama's a six-and-a-half-point favor in that game, but I think that'll change over time. But, yeah. but I do think that Daniel has to – LSU's got to figure out at the quarterback position one thing. And, th and it's not that uh, Alabama's got to figure out a quarterback uh, situation as well, but I, I think the one thing is is y you've got a, got a kid back there that doesn't understand how to let a play develop offensively. He wants to tuck it and run and get out of the pocket. Uh, he's just not very comfortable there. If he's grown in that over the, over the offseason, then I think LSU is poised to make a big run. 
All right, so uh, uh, both of you, I take it, are picking the same teams, Georgia yeah. and LSU. Uh, Josh, who's your uh, SEC champion? Well, last year, same same SEC championship game last year. Georgia played LSU in Atlanta, won 50-30 to 30 in that game. Uh, and I've got Georgia, again, uh, winning the SEC championship uh, against LSU and going to the playoffs again for a third time in a row. So. I agree. I think Georgia wins the uh, SEC championship. I think things will get a little more dicey for them in the college playoff because it's so hard to three-peat. So hard to, number one, so hard to, to, to repeat. But to three-peat is almost unheard of. But uh, we'll see. You know, I think Georgia wins the SEC, though, again. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break right here. It's more SEC Saturday presented by CHI Memorial up next. You're watching SEC Saturday on Mix 104.1 and MixTV.TV. Presented by CHI Memorial. Welcome back, everyone, to the all-new SEC Saturday on Mix 1041, Mix TV, Dot TV, and Talk 1013, The Buzz. It's presented by CHI Memorial. And I guess uh, it's kind of like uh, Prince, formerly known as, or whatever, we're formerly uh, Rocky <laughs> Top Review. Uh, but we are, if you're just joining us, taking, expand, taking an expanded look this season at uh, at uh, everything. All right, uh, getting ready for UT in Virginia at noon. We have a brand new feature that I believe we're going to make a regular feature. We normally do this toward the end of the season, but this is always a fascinating topic, and that is the hot seat. Well, this year, Wholesale Supply Group and American Water Heaters, it's uh, their hot seat now, the Wholesale Supply American Water Heater hot seat. And uh, who wants to take uh, the first? Uh, go, let him go, go ahead, Sean. Well, I mean, it's the wholesale supply well, group. I'd uh, let no, Mr. No, wholesale no, no. himself. Hey, but hey. Uh, my hot seat, I've got two guys on the top of the list. Actually, I'm going to do three very quickly. Uh, Jimbo Fisher is on top of my hot seat. He is on top of the water heater right now. Absolutely. Uh, and so Jimbo Fisher, if he went, if he loses first couple games, his buyout was 18 million. Now it's half that. Yeah. But he brings in Bobby Petrino. This is, yeah. and, and and so what I was going to say. is, Petrino is the offense coordinator. You don't know what you're going to get. No. And, and, and the problem is this. Jimbo Fisher has recor- recruited offensive players for his style of offense. Now Petrino's coming in, and, and Fisher has relinquished all duties on the offensive side of the football. So, I mean, get your scooters out, get your bicycles out, get your motorcycles out, and get your interns out. Because <laughs> I, I'm, 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 t- I'm telling you right now, this could be a crash course, excuse the pun, yeah. in offense uh, in Aggie Nation. Number two is Hugh Freeze. He has a shorter leash than any human on the face of the earth right now. His contract has so many caveats in it that if he sneezes wrong, he's fired with calls, and boom, he has no buyout. Yeah. Number three is Sam Pittman. Sam Pittman has – that he had Arkansas at number two maybe at one point. They have continued to finish seven and six, six and six, six and five. Under Sam Pittman now, he was seven and six last year, losing four games by nine points or more. Uh, Sam Pittman is on the hot seat in Arkansas. Josh, what do you make of it? Yeah, absolutely, totally agree with you about Hugh Freeze and Sam Pittman. I, I think Sam Pittman is probably the next coach to go in the SEC. I think Hugh Freeze – I think you bring him in, and, and it's going to take a few years for Auburn to get good again. I, I think that he's brought in a lot of players this year, and I think that um, that it's going to take a couple years to develop. But, you know, he there is going to always be that, should we get rid of him, should we try and find somebody else? Because Auburn always wants to be Alabama. They want to be at the top. Um, and I agree with Jimbo Fisher. Bobby Petrino, head coach for many, many years, right, do we see if, if Texas A&M starts losing, does Jimbo lose his job midseason and Bobby Petrino steps in to be the head coach at Texas A&M just to finish the season out? Uh, I mean, it, You're it, a it, fellow Falcons fan. It is he un- walked out on us. I totally agree. But I could see where you bring this guy in and he could take over your job, uh, not just to OC, but, but as the head yeah. coach as well by the end of the season. But I've got another one oh, that is on the hot seat. Oh, God. And that is Mr. Sir Nicholas Lou Saban Jr. And I believe that Saban is not on the hot seat with the university. He's not on the hot seat with the AD. He's not on the hot seat with the board of trustees. But he is on the hot seat with these fans. Because what what happened is, is Alabama has not won a national championship since 2020. And Georgia has won back-to-back. And Alabama has lost some games over the years that they shouldn't have lost. 
they've replaced defensive coordinators. They've replaced offensive coordinators. It's been a revolving door in that coaching staff at Alabama. And I think that if you see an Alabama this year that has two, three, four losses to someone like LSU, Texas A&M, Auburn, Ole Miss, those fans down in Alabama are going to get a little rowdy. And so I, I don't think that Saban's going to look. They're going to build a statue bigger than Bear Bryant. They've at, already got at, it's already at, down there. Well, they're going to build more. They're going to have one. They're on, more they're, they're going to have one on every street corner of Nick Saban down there, and and he will go down as probably one of the best coaches in college football history, oh. the top five, top three coaches Absolutely. ever. But for me, I think that Alabama has to step up and prove, and I think the only way that they do that is win a national championship this year, and that's going to be a long, long journey for them. All right, that's your uh, wholesale supply group, American Water Heater Hot Seat. When we come back, we have more of the all-new SEC Saturday presented by CHI Memorial in just a moment. You're watching SEC Saturday on Mix 104.1 and MixTV.TV, presented by CHI Memorial. Welcome back, everyone. It is the all-new SEC Saturday presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, Hello Human Kindness, counting down to kickoff of week one, opening weekend of the season for UT. They will take on Virginia in Nashville, a noon kickoff. Well, in the spirit of SEC Saturday, it's all about, well, the SEC. And so we're going to do some uh, game previews. Let's begin for the home of the happiest place on earth. Not so happy when the game ends for one team with hopes of making the college football playoffs. LSU and Florida State begin their season in a top 10 showdown in Orlando, Florida. However, with both sides loaded with NFL talent, this game should be explosive. The winner will be placed smack dab in the mix for a college football playoff conversation. In my opinion, it's the best game of the weekend. Stephen Shelton, what do you think? I can't agree more. This is so exciting. Both these teams, LSU is poised, we both said, to, to have a chance to win the SEC. I think Florida State is the overall-whelming favorite to win the SEC. Uh, I'm sorry, ACC, uh, before they jump to the SEC. So, you know, you, you're, you're in neutral. You're in a neutral stadium. It's kind of a home game for Florida State, just, just in Orlando. But, uh, you know, LSU is a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this game. I, I do have a few – LSU with Jaden Daniels, we talked about it earlier in the show, he's got to stay in the pocket and let, let his offensive schemes develop before he decides to take off. And it, he killed himself so many times last year – He's got a little bit of controversy at quarterback already before the first game of the year. But but FSU, can we talk about Jordan Travis? This guy is one of the most electric players in the nation. He's got great playmakers. He's got transfers from across the nation that have come in to play. I just think LSU goes to Orlando. Florida State escapes with a three-point victory. Wow. Wow. Josh Rogers. Yeah, I agree with you. Jane Daniels, I mean, he's the star quarterback. He was the leading rusher uh, and has completely, I mean, changed after kind of really that Tennessee game last year and really kind of turned it on. Mason Smith, one of the, uh, LSU's elite defensive tackles, big news this past week, suspended by the NCAA for a pre-NIL signing where he signed some autographs for some cash, um, will not play. And, and he is probably their biggest playmaker on that defensive line. Between the arrival of, uh, of Kelly that, uh, that, uh, that came uh, last year, first year, uh, and the re six returning starters, LSU enters a mystery and a wild card team. Uh, Kelly obviously has won everywhere that he has been, and regardless whether Daniels plays quarterback, Nuss Nussmeyer plays, um, I truly believe that it, the LSU really comes down to how does Kayshawn Booty play this year. He is by far the best wide receiver in in the NCAA, um, and he, he's going to be amazing. I agree with Shelton. Florida State, it's pretty much a home game for them. Uh, and Travis, you know, he does hold the keys for their success. Um, in nine games, I'll read this stat real quick. In nine games he started since the beginning of 2021, the Seminoles averaged 34.5 points per game and 6.5 yards per play. In the four games that he did not start, Florida State only managed 17 points and 5 yards per play. 
He's an unbelievable passer, has one of the opportunities to probably be one of the best quarterbacks in this year's league. But this is SEC Saturday, and I'm t- picking the Tigers big over Florida State. Big. No, big. Not so fast, my friend. Big. FSU wins at home. Sorry. And, I, and I'm going to pick a game every now and then. All right. <clears throat> game number two that we're looking at on SEC Saturday It's a Carolina showdown as the Tar Heels and Gamecocks tangle for bragging rights in Charlotte, the uh, Duke Mayo uh, Classic, uh, tonight at 7.30. Lots of points will be scored by two elite quarterbacks while two defenses are desperate to show they're worthy of a primetime game. These, uh, These two should trade punches for a full 60 minutes. And what might be the best and craziest offensive game of week one? Josh Rogers tonight, 730 ABC television. You know, we talked about the player from the quarterback from Florida State, how he might be one of the best quarterbacks out there right now. But the best quarterback in the NCAA, I believe, right now is Drake May at North Carolina. He has the biggest upside when it comes to going to the NFL. Um, He's regarded as probably the top player, top two or three best players. Uh, last year, he passed for 4,321 yards, 38 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions. And now Josh, Josh Downs, who went to the NFL, he's gone. South Carolina might have moved the offense at times, but, but there are tons and tons of problems with turnovers. Um, and and the, the issue that I have with it is, with this game, is how does Drake May produce? How does that offensive line hold up for North Carolina And when it comes against South Carolina? South Carolina last year literally had no defense whatsoever, none, the entire season. The only game that they really won and really won the entire game was against Tennessee, and it, and it, and it was a beatdown, and it, it truly was. The Gamecocks have to be far more consistent, and a few key parts from last year, great, uh, to, to really kind of continue. Um, they, they beat Clemson, they beat Tennessee, but again, it all comes down to what that South Carolina defense does. Two elite quarterbacks that they're going to have this year for South Carolina, Spencer Adler, Drake May for North Carolina. But I think that in Charlotte, North Carolina goes up and gets the win against South Carolina to start the season off. Mac Brown of Cookville, Tennessee. How about it, Shelton? Uh, Steve Spurrier, Will Muschamp, and Ah! Shane Beamer. Three coaches I just can't stand to see on television. Wow. It's like Karnak almost. I mean, I hope North Carolina puts up more points than their basketball team could <laughs> against the, 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 game, the, game, the game chickens. And so, oh, I, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think I will say Spencer Rattler has a chance to be you – know, you have two, two quarterbacks in this game that could be drafted next year. That's, that's not many games you get in college football where you can say – both these guys are NFL prospects. And possibly in the first round. Uh, and so, Sp- yeah. you know, Spencer struggled at first. But you got to remember he was transferring in from Oklahoma. Uh, from Oklahoma. Still threw for 3,000 yards last year. He he is an elite uh, type quarterback. Uh, I, I will say that, that whoever's defense plays better, this game wins. It's a, We keep talking about the offense, but defense is going to win this game. But remember this, as much as I don't like the game, chickens – there is one thing I will say. Remember, North Carolina is coming off four consecutive losses, and there's a lot, a lot of people that want Mac Brown to retire in Tar Heel country. So he needs an early victory to get the party started. And South Carolina really wants to try to play off of – remember, South Carolina knocked Tennessee out of a national champ- championship uh, playoff berth possibly, knocked Clemson out of one. They, they were the world killers at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Can they carry that over to the first game of this season? All right, we'll see. And the game that's coming up at noon is uh, Virginia and Tennessee, number 12 Tennessee. These two teams first met in 1927, but they've not played since 1991. 1991, when Tennessee defeated Virginia uh, 33-23, the 1991 Sugar Bowl. However, it's a new year, a fresh start, at least on the field for the Virginia football program, coming off a tragic season that we remember that horrific shooting taking the lives of three Cavalier players. On the field, the Cavs must crank up an offensive struggle throughout last year, but could find an opportunity against a growing Tennessee defense that allowed 290 yards a game last year. However, if the Vols' offense picks up where they left off last season, it could be a long day in Music City. The question now is, will we see Orange Bowl quarterback Joe Melton 
or will people walking down Broadway have to watch for overthrown passes? And we'll begin with Stephen Shelton. Well, first of all, I don't think that uh, Virginia's got a couple of problems. Their coaches don't even know where they interviewed at. He thinks he interviewed for the Tennessee job at one point. Uh, he did not. Uh, so uh, you've got a guy that's an ACC guy that came from Clemson, jumps to Virginia. They've not been very good. They're not very good. Uh, Tennessee has, is going to have to really, really depend on if Cooper Mays is unable to play the center position. He is the anchor of that offensive line. Uh, Ollie Lane and, and, and Donye Davis are going to have to fill in. That's big for the Vols. Uh, for Virginia, it's all about transfer quarterback Tony Musket. This guy, you know, threw for 2,000 yards last year and 17 touchdowns, but too bad it was for Monmouth. 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 Yeah. Uh, and so I, I just I think – I know they're the tournament. Yeah, anyway. I just think that Tennessee goes to Nashville. Uh, I think Tennessee comes out with a three- to four-touchdown victory. Josh, what do you make of it? This is the first game Virginia's played. Uh, they took two games uh, off last year, so Tennessee is the first opponent that they have played – uh, since the shooting and the, and the death of the three players. I think Virginia will come out and be hyped up for this game. They're, they're ready to play. They're ready to, to get back on the field and, and have that kind of fresh start. Um, Tennessee likely won't be the offensive machine it, it was last year right out of the gate. Their receivers are great. Their running game is unbelievably fantastic. Um, and I truly don't think that the Cavaliers are going to be able to keep up pace uh, with, with, um, with Tennessee on it. That being said – this game is Joe Milton's spotlight. This, the spotlight is completely on him, to whether he's going to be good or whether he's going to be the Joe Milton of old. And if he's not, you might see Nico play very quickly this year. And I think that with Tennessee, they, I've heard, you know, we've, we, we, we talk and hear things all the time and that Joe is, Joe is the quarterback that they've wanted and that they knew that he could be. And, and we're going to have to see that in game time. Tennessee is a 28.5, I believe, favorite on this game. But do the Cavaliers come to Nashville and win? I don't know. I think I'm going to take Tennessee in this ah! game. Uh, first time I've picked Tennessee in a very, very long time. But I, I, if it was anybody else, I probably wouldn't pick them. But uh, I think Virginia, they will play good. I think it's going to be closer than 28 points. Uh, but I think it gets away from them at the end of the game. So, Go Vols. Both going to Tennessee. I'll make it uh, uh, unanimous. Now, we're going to do a new feature. It's a lightning round. Got about a minute left. On SEC Saturday, we're going to pick uh, – each of us have a non-SEC game. Rogers, Josh Rogers, I'm going to begin with you, Commissioner. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the game that I'm watching this week is going to be Colorado and TCU. It's the first time that Dion gets to play in the big with the big boys and, and get to see how primetime does. TCU coming off an embarrassing national championship loss to Georgia 65-7 to last year. How do they turn it around uh, and continue on? That game is at 12 p.m. on Fox. I will be watching it instead of Tennessee, so make sure you tune into Fox and watch that game and don't watch the Tennessee game. Keep the Listen ratings down. Here, uh, Duke Clemson. Uh, Mike Elko uh, took a Duke team that was three and nine, put them to ten and three last year. They gave him an extension through twenty twenty nine. He was the ACC Coach of the Year. They play Clemson this week. Then La uh, Lafayette, Northwestern, UConn don't play anybody till week five in Notre Dame. Duke host Clemson and starts the end of Clemson's dynasty in the ACC. Whoa, West Virginia at Penn State. NBC picks up the Big Ten every Saturday night. And I've got Penn State at home because of what Shelton said. All right, uh, that's it. It's the first edition ever of SEC Saturday presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, hello, human kindness. You can listen to UT today on your phone and mobile devices, the Mix 1041 app. That's free thanks to CHI Memorial. Download for free at mymix1041.com. I don't want it. What, what do you? Ring, baby. Oh, go. yeah.